Right, enough practical instructions. Let's do some thinking together, shall we? For as I said earlier, today we are marking the martyrdom of Archbishop Janani Luam. He's a modern day martyr. Luam was born a hundred years ago in 1922 in Acholi in Uganda. In his childhood, he was a goat herder, but he quickly showed his ability to learn when given the opportunity. Uh, he became a teacher and then shortly afterwards converted to Christianity. He was ordained in 1956 and then became Bishop of Northern Uganda in 69 and Archbishop of Uganda in 74. Now, as I'm sure you'll remember, Idi Amin had come to power in Uganda in 71 as a result of a military coup. And his undemocratic and harsh rule was the subject of a lot of criticism by the church and others. As you'll know, his rule was characterized by great violence it's estimated that around half a million Ugandans lost their lives due to Armin's rule and policies. He, he used the technique of blaming outsiders for his country's problems, a common technique of all despotic rulers, and that led to the expulsion of an entire ethnic group, as I'm sure some of you will remember, uh, particularly 50,000 Asian Ugandans. Interestingly, quite a few of them fled to the UK, where many famously set up corner shops. And then by virtue of the long hours that they were prepared to work, uh, the way that they ignored uh, customs of half-day closing and of not trading on Sundays or not trading late at night, Asian shopkeepers ultimately transformed the entire British attitude to shopping. But let's get back to Archbishop Luam. In 1977, Luam delivered a letter of protest on behalf of the House of Bishops to Idi Amin. It was a protest against Amin's policy of arbitrary killings and the unexplained disappearances of his political rivals. Very soon afterwards, Archbishop Luam and two of Idi Amin's own government ministers were found dead following an apparent car accident. It emerged quickly, though, that they had in fact died on the implicit instructions of the president. Their bodies, which should have just been in a car accident, were in fact riddled with bullets. Rumours abounded that Amin himself had pulled the trigger though it was never proven. Luam's enthusiasm for the good news of Jesus, combined with his willingness to stand up to godly principles, especially godly principles in politics, led to his martyrdom on this day, the 17th of February in 1977. His life and his death stand as an important outworking of Jesus' teaching in the Gospel that we've just heard. Luam understood that it's sometimes necessary for Christians to risk their very lives in pursuit of the Kingdom of God. Jesus said, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain but if it dies, it bears much fruit. This was so true of Luam. Had he not stood up against Amin, he would perhaps be remembered only as one of the many church leaders who quite like a quiet life under repressive regimes. He would have been someone who would have been seen to uh, just give in to the poisonous politics of his time. But he was willing to let his grain of seed fall to the ground. Luam inspired millions of Ugandans to resist Armin's tyrannical rule and millions of others around the world to be prepared to call out injustice wherever it's found. 
Luam's reputation as a shining example to all Christians was cemented when his statue was included among the ten modern-day martyrs who now adorn the west front of Westminster Abbey. Now, our other reading for today comes from the book of Ecclesiasticus. And yes, Sandra said it quite right. It wasn't the book of Ecclesiastes, it's the book of Ecclesiasticus, which um, is otherwise known as the Wisdom of Sirach. It's a, it's a late book. It was written only a century or so before Jesus came to earth. And as such, it's treated with honour by the church, but not as an official part of the canon of Scripture. It's a book of wisdom. And amongst its wisdom, we find phrases like those that we heard in our earliest reading this morning, which are certainly worth pondering. My eye was drawn most especially to this line. Do not subject yourself to a fool or show partiality to a ruler. Now, Archbishop Lewham would almost certainly have known this text, or at very, the very least, its truth reflected in other scriptures. He refused to subject himself to the foolish ruler of Uganda. He refused to show partiality, unquestioning loyalty to Idi Amin. There is, I think, a tendency in all human politics for us to align ourselves to one particular party or ruling elite, isn't there? We quickly learn from that party that all other parties are full of evil, devious people who want to destroy our way of life. Uh, nothing that any other opposing party has to say is worth listening to. And there is no wisdom to be found in them whatsoever. They're all idiots or seditionists who want to ruin our country, aren't they? Hmm. Well, of course, the truth is something else entirely. No one party or political ruler has a monopoly on wisdom, nor will any one party get every decision right or wrong. Our leaders are, in fact, just like us, imperfect human beings who see through a glass darkly. The sacred task of the Christian citizen is to have the courage to stand up against any political idea that runs counter to the principles of the kingdom of God, from whichever political camp that idea has emerged, just as Archbishop Lewham did. Now, how far each of us may be prepared to go in that task is ultimately a matter between us and God. There's a spectrum of protest on which we all stand nearer one end or the other, isn't there? At the very least, we are called to cast our votes wisely when the opportunity comes. For some of us, however, uh, our sacred call may mean signing a petition or joining a protest. For others, perhaps especially those who are skilled with the written word, it might mean writing letters of protest to politicians, making sure that they are aware of the feelings of the Christian community. For some, it may mean standing for political office, as indeed members of our congregation have done and indeed are doing. I'm aware of one member at the moment who is putting herself forward for election very soon. For some, it may even mean being prepared to let our own grain of truth fall to the ground through martyrdom. So that by our example, much fruit may flourish. Now, Archbishop Lewham clearly stood at the far end of that spectrum of protest against the rule of a fool. 
His example, however, leaves us all with a question and a challenge, doesn't it? Where do we stand? What will we do today, this week, right now, to cast our own grain of kingdom truth into the ground of earthly politics? Which kingdom principles are being ignored or stomped upon by our political leaders today? And what are we going to do about it? Let's remember Archbishop Lewham with gratitude. Gratitude for the strength of his commitment and the inspiration that it gives to all of us. Amen.